Hey, Andrew Chelman here with MachineSkills.com. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any video tutorials. In this video, I'll be covering how to import wave samples into Machine. Machine already has a pretty expansive sound library. It's one of the best things about it, in my opinion. But the nice thing is you can import any of your own samples. Now, this is great for um, any free samples you may find or if you purchase any wave sample packs. I know that ADSR has its own um, wave sample pack selection, so if you have any of those downloaded, this will show you how to use those with machine. Okay, so the first thing that you'll do is obviously just download the wave samples onto your computer, and I recommend creating a, a dedicated sample folder to hold all your samples. And once you have that, you can go ahead and navigate through that using the, um, the file browser in machine. So that's located just on the second tab over here. And this will mimic uh, the file explorer of your operating system. So for me, I'm just working on um, Windows computer. So this will be similar to Windows Explorer. So I'll just navigate to my sample folder. And you can see that some of these are highlighted white. And that's just because I was working in here earlier. So uh, the previous locations I was looking in are, are highlighted. Just a nice way to, to show where you're going previously. And um, once you find your folder, it might be beneficial to add that to the favorites up in here. So I have some, some favorites up here and you can add any folder up there just by right clicking on it and then hitting add to favorites. So um, if you have that dedicated sample folder like I was talking about, you can easily add that up there. So you can just click on it and get to that folder instead of navigating through all your different drives and, and whatnot. It's a little bit easier to find. But anyways, once we have our sample folder loaded up, we want to find the samples that we want to work with. And for this video, I'll be working with these, these black drums that I found online. So you can see that they're all organized in these, these subcategories here. It's not just like one giant folder with all the samples in there. When we want to import them, we want to navigate to the overall containing folder. So I'm going to go up a level just with this little button here. And we want to, we want to say highlighted on this overall containing folder. And that's because this will be automatically assigned as the product. And you can think of a product, if we go to the browser here real fast, you can think of a product as like an expansion pack here. And once you open that up, you can see we have um, those drums in there. So this large folder that contains everything will be designated as the product. And then these subfolders will automatically be assigned to the banks within there. And then if there's any subfolders within those folders, I don't have any in this case, but if there are, those will be assigned as, um, as sub banks. So you don't really have any control over that besides choosing where you import from. Um, but just a general rule of thumb is to go to the, the overall containing folder and go from there. So um, I'll have my, my folder here, and I'm going to scroll down, just hit import down here. You can see once this pops up, we have different modes or types. Uh, modes is for effects and instruments, and types is for drums, I believe. So, um, so for me, I'm just going to be working with types, and obviously these are just drum samples, so I'm just going to select drums from this list. And I could go through here. However, um, all the folders within here are, are different kinds of samples. So I can't automatically categorize all of these samples as like a kick drum or everything because um, because there's different types of samples within that folder. So the, the only categorization I can do before importing is calling them just drums. Okay, so everything is set here. I'm gonna make sure we have that checked and we can just hit okay. So you see that machine does its little thing there, imports everything and we can head over to our library, make sure we're on the samples icon over here and then our user icon over here. Or I'm going to click on this all samples here and then we'll be able to find our product like we were talking about. So here's our product, the black drums, and then within the, um, within the product there are these different banks of different types of samples. So we can already just get to the different types of samples here if we just want some kicks. We can go down and just select that. So already somewhat organized, but we can we can take it a step further. We'll do that by applying different tags to all these samples. So I'll be working with I'll just start here with the kicks, and we can we can tag these as kick drums. So I'm going to press Control A on my keyboard just to select all of my kick drums here. I'm going to go down here and hit Edit. So you can see that these are categorized as drums. And now we can type this a step further because we only have the kick drum selected. So I'll just um, go ahead and click that. And then I think these are close enough to vinyl samples. I'll call them that. And um, just another way to further specify what these samples actually are. I recommend making it as specific as possible. So when you're searching for samples, you can find them easily and have, have control over your library. So I'm going to apply these settings here. Then you can see a couple things should happen. So if we go back to our kicks, 
you can see that these are now kick and vinyl. And um, if we get rid of our bank, um, so we can start to see how this works here. We have our drums. If we want to just find our kicks, here are all those kicks. So I'm going to um, go back to my snares here and then do the same thing just to give an idea of how this works again. Um, control A, drums. I'm going to make this a little bigger. You can just drag it up. Drums, snare, call these vinyl snares, apply. And so now if we have all of our, um, all of our product and bank filters taken off, we can go to our drums and then um, if we just want some kick drums, here are those kick drums. Let me get out of here. Here are those kick drums. Here are our snare drums. And um, just another way to filter these samples. And you might be wondering, well, what's the point of this? Like, why can't I just use the product and then the bank filters to get to those same samples? Well, it starts coming to play if you, um, if you have different folders of samples, different products. Um, so if we have some more, if we, if we found like another sample pack that has some vinyl drums, we would, uh, we would tag those the same way. And then when we went to drums, snare, and vinyl, we would have um, all of our vinyl snares from the samples I just imported, as well as all other vinyl snares from other products. So it's just a filter by type rather than product. And again, I recommend going as specific as possible um, just to keep everything organized and easily accessible. Another benefit of loading samples into machines library is that you can access those samples from the hardware. That's one of the biggest things for me. So once you've imported everything, you can just go into the browse menu on your hardware go to the user sample selection over here. You can scroll through the products, you can scroll through the different banks, or you can go by type and then um, select anything that you're looking for. And once you have that selected, you can scroll through and then load it up. So just like that, you have your user samples loaded onto machines tag based library. You can easily access them, easily organize them, and you can go on the hardware and load everything up from there. So I highly recommend going through your sample library and doing that. And um, as always, if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.